So, hello Slush. Are you guys all like slushed out for today or are you still ready for some open impact data? Yeah, I can see at least a couple of you nodding. So my name is Annu. I'm the founder and CEO of Upright. And my passion is creating better understanding of how companies actually impact the world around us. Um, and my dream is that really high quality understanding would be accessible to all of us, not just to a couple of people in suits sitting in a big asset manager's office, maybe looking at a fancy screen, but to all of us as people who choose where we work, what we buy, um, who we invest in as investors, and so on. Now, as you all know, there is increasing attention on the impact of business and the sustainability of business. We've been hearing in basically all of the stages here at Slush, in some shape or form, talk about impact. And that is all really great for the future of humanity. However, there are still a couple of fundamental problems in the discussion that need fixing. The first one is that we are still really heavily focused on talking about how a company does what it does, and a little bit shying away from really looking at the science of what follows from the core business of the company. The second problem is that this data is not really accessible and transparent to everybody. It is maybe hidden in some systems, there are some black boxes, maybe giving you some indication of sustainability, but we cannot yet talk about open data. And this is a problem, because if data is not open, it's not debatable, it's not something we can actually make decisions on. And thirdly, is that majority of the discussion is focused on carbon and emissions. Now, why is this a problem? It's even if carbon is the, one of the most important categories of impact, or even the most way, in, like most impactful way in which a company can impact the world around them, it is still not enough to understand CO2 emissions or calculations on them to even optimize carbon. So even if you're only about to optimize greenhouse gas emissions, you need to understand other impact categories as well. Why? Let me, let's look at a concrete example. So let's look at two companies, A and B. Same, same, but different. And let's assume that both of them have gone through a rigorous, rigorous, really high quality carbon accounting or carbon calculation process. And for both of them, the conclusion is that the CO2 equivalent emissions are exactly X tons. OK, so these companies are pretty much alike when it comes to carbon or climate. But what do these companies actually do? Where does the money come from? For company A, the money comes from a sugar-sweetened soft drink that is marketed mainly for kids. And for company B, the money comes from a type 2 diabetes treatment program, also uh, marketed for the same target audience. Now, this is a naive and simple example, but I guess we can all agree that based on science, the first company, company A, is basically causing a problem with significant societal costs, both economic and human costs as well. And the other one is basically solving the same problem, or at least trying to solve the same problem. So, Based on just the carbon uh, emission information, we cannot yet know which company to invest in, uh, which company to work for, which company to buy from. So we need more. What then? What you basically need is open, something everyone can see for themselves, and science-based, not marketing slogan-based, data on what I call the net impact of companies. Now, what is net impact? It can be summarized into a simple graph like this. Basically, we need to look at, on the left-hand side, all the negative ways in which the company impacts the world surrounding them. And not just in environment, not just emissions, but looking at the entire value creation spectrum of the company. Society, knowledge creation, health of people, not just physical health, also mental health, and then, of course, the environment. And not just emissions, but also biodiversity, waste, and so on. And on the right-hand side, we need to understand why does this company exist? Why do people buy their product? What, what is their reason for existence? Which is then the positive value that they create for the surrounding world. This is what I dedicate my everyday life with, and I would love to give you an, an, an introduction to how this actually works. 
Now, this is my biggest passion. This is the most difficult problem I've ever tried to solve. And this would really require a four-hour four uh, lecture to really go through the model uh, that we have built. But let me try to summarize it to you, like a 60-second version of how the model works. So what we built at Upright is a huge simulation of the global private sector. What it means is that basically we have modeled all the products and the services that can be traded in the global markets. Uh, today, there are more than 150,000 product and service categories. Like the soda mentioned there could be one, but it would need to be a bit more granular, like an aspartam sweetened soft drink packaged in a recyclable aluminum can, for example. What we then do is we allocate uh, huge amounts of scientific data on top of that graph. So we basically take, for example, the anthropogenic, so human caused emissions, the total 100% of those according to the IPCC, and we allocate them across the network of companies. And it's very crucial to know that this is not just a graph, like a list of, of products, but it's a graph that knows value chain linkages, because no company can afford to think that they're an island in 2022, but companies impact each other's impact in the value chain. Um, this is now one way of summarizing the IP. So basically what we do on the left-hand side, we look at the world's largest open access database for uh, scientific publications, the core, and a bunch of other openly available databases. And we collect them together. We use a bunch of nice technologies, happy to talk more about them, such as natural language processing, to basically draw together four sets of data. The net impact that summarizes the big picture of what are the negative and the positive impacts of this company, this fund, this portfolio, this startup accelerator for the surrounding world. And in addition, we look at UN Sustainable Development Goal alignment and a couple of data sets to help many of our investor customers tackle the EU sustainable finance regulation, which is increasingly a big practic practic uh, pragmatic uh, problem investors are facing. This is what the, what the data looks like on a more of a fund level. And as you can see on the net score, there is a lot still to be done. On the SDGs, as when maybe one, one note, it is very important to not just look at this kind of sticker collection when anyone can basically just copy and paste SDGs from a website and say that, hey, our company is contributing to this SDG. But also, not just look at the alignment, but also the misalignment. Because you might easily be contributing to one SDG while at the same time harming another. It is extremely important to be data-driven. So what does all of this then mean? Why are we doing this? It is in the end of the day to enable anyone in the, in the private markets, each of us as individuals, whether we are representing an investor professionally or maybe privately, whether we are looking at as a person who works for a company, whether we look at as a customer, a consumer, or maybe a leader, a manager in a company. This data needs to be made freely accessible for everyone to make more science-based decisions. There is a lot of talk of whether the data is out there. That is not the problem. If humanity doesn't succeed in, in saving itself in the next 50 years, the problem was not that we didn't have the source data. The problem was that we weren't smart enough of how to very draw, to, draw it together, allocate it to real companies and funds, and start to understand the big picture science behind it. But don't just take it from me. Please go to uprightplatform.com. We already have there more than 1,000 openly available profiles. Go and dig through the data yourself. And stay tuned for next spring, when we go really next level all in on the openness of impact data. Thank you so much. <laughs>